to another program of Look What God is Doing. This program is sponsored by the Lamaha Street Fellowship and my name is Frederick Flats and I'm here to declare the word of the Lord. Before I begin to do so, I want to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that as your word goes forth, that your word indeed will be a blessing to our hearts to the extent that we'll be drawn closer to you. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, for those who have been following Look What God Is Doing program, you know that we have been looking at the kingdom of God over the last few months. We have looked at the need for us to see the kingdom and we are looking now at entering the kingdom of God. And we are using the children of Israel leaving Egypt and heading for the promised land and entering the promised land as the basis for this message. In other words, I'm comparing the kingdom of God to the promised land because that's where we're supposed to be going. We are not just carrying on church. The church is not a club. God has given us certain things to do. As the children of Israel left Egypt, even so we must be born again. We must come out of that house of bondage but there is a journey journey was not supposed to be long but because the children of Israel were fearful and they they saw themselves as grasshoppers and the enemy as giants and so on we know that they <laughs> they were given 40 years to go around in the wilderness until that unbelief um, was taken away from them. And so for 40 years, they went around in circles. Uh, they, this, that is the adults, they did not see the promised land. Of course, Joshua, Caleb, Moses, they were exceptions. They saw the promised land. And after the 40 years were completed, they got to the eastern side of the Jordan River. Two and a half tribes decided they were not going across. They had their own substitute for what God had promised. However, there was a compromise that was drawn up there, I call it God's permissive will. And so, the men of war from those two and a half tribes, they crossed, they left their children behind, and they actually entered Jordan River, crossed it, and came out on the other side, which was the promised land. And things really changed there. They had to get their own food, manna ceased, to get their own food, they had to attack the enemy because the trees <laughs> were owned by the enemy. The houses were built by the enemy. And so this was now time for warfare. Yes, we talk a lot about entering the kingdom. 
but it's when we enter the kingdom of God, we enter into unprecedented warfare. This is time to fight. And that's exactly what, it, what it's about. Now, the first place that they were going to attack, according to the command of the Lord, was Jericho. That's the first place. And last week, we finished by looking at Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, where, and I'm going to read these verses quickly. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Verse 14. And he said, No, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What said my Lord unto his servant? This here was an appearance of the Lord in the Old Testament, the Lord himself appeared with his sword drawn. And Joshua did not realize who the person was. And so he asked the Lord, you know, which side are you on? And the Lord told him, and the Lord told him who he was. And then when Joshua realized who he was, he fell on his face. Well, we need to to note that as we enter the kingdom of God, we are not there trying our best or trying a thing or hoping for the best. The Lord is actually with us. The Lord is actually going before us. You know, there are many Christians who are fearful about going on, about entering the kingdom of God. It sounds like a foreign language. But yes, it's going to be warfare in an unprecedented way. But we should take strength in knowing that God is going before us. Even the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We are not fighting on our own. The Lord is going before us. We are being led by the Lord himself. So we need not be fearful. Yes, we have not passed this way before. It's new. But we can take courage in the truth that the Lord himself is going before us. We now go to Joshua chapter 6. Verse 1, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Well, <laughs> why was that so? Well, you may recall that I looked at the principle of the enemy being afraid of us. Many times we are caught up with the enemies, you know, they are giants, the walls are high up to heaven, and we look and we feel like grasshoppers. We, we, we tend to be fearful. But let me remind us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I believe that sound mind is the mind of Christ. We do not have to be fearful. Here the enemy was fearful. Right? They did not dare to come out or to go in. They were shut in. They were actually under siege. I want to encourage us with that. Okay? We do not have to be afraid the enemy is afraid of us then 
I go on to verse 2, Joshua chapter 6. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of war. This is encouragement. Now, the Lord did not say, we are trying something, we're going to hope for the best, or anything like that. The Lord said, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king, and the mighty men of war. This is a principle that I want us to recognize and to remember. We are not really fighting to see if we can be successful. Jesus Christ was already successful on Calvary's cross. He already won the victory. We are here to enforce that victory. That's our responsibility, to enforce that victory. We are here to ensure that what the Lord won on Calvary's cross is what we shall see. So I like those words where Joshua was told, I have given into your hand Jericho. Right? And that's the situation. You see, when the children of Israel were on the eastern side of Jordan contemplating crossing, they did not have such instruction. And what I have learned is that as we obey the Lord and take the next step, we get further instruction. Many times we want to get everything very clear. Well, in that case, we would not need faith. But the Lord says, cross, and we cross. And then we cross, God says, well, the first place is Jericho. I have already given them into your hand. Don't be afraid of them. I have given all the mighty men of valor into your hand. There are things we will never hear unless we enter the kingdom of God. Wonderful things God wants to tell us. But if we stay on the eastern side of Jordan and try to get everything before we cross, we will never cross. Because it's as we obey God that he gives us instruction for the next step. And then we go on to verse 3 of Joshua chapter 6. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shall you do six days. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear the ark, before the ark, sorry, seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And further instruction. So in other words, here's the first place. You call upon to defeat them. And now I'm going to give you the strategy. Yes, God told them that he has delivered Jericho into their hands. The king, the mighty men, the whole place. Good, thank God for that. That's encouragement. What is the exact strategy? And this is important because as we talk about entering the kingdom of God, a lot of warfare is involved. The enemy is not going to stand by idly and allow us to enter and to inherit the kingdom of God. There's going to be fight. There's going to be warfare. But how can we be encouraged? God actually 
gives us the strategy. So here, the strategy is you will go around Jericho one time each day for six days. And who are the people who are going to be going around? It's going to be the, the, the warriors followed by the priests. Then you had the Ark of the Covenant. That's very important because the Ark of the Covenant speaks of the power and presence of God. If that power is not with us, whatever we are doing will fail. It will be an exercise in futility, meaningless. You see, the power of God is actually real. Many people who are young believers or who are not believers think that when we talk about the power and presence of God, we are merely using religious phrases. We are merely talking theologically or something like that. But let me see that the power of God is actually real. No one who has experienced the power of God would think that this is just words that we put together as if we are in some club. No, the power of God is real. And so they were going around the city or Jericho, yes, with the Ark of the Covenant. The priests were also there and they had their trumpets and they were going around Jericho. And of course, they were blowing the trumpets and so on. And the Lord told them, well, you do that. You go around the city one time each day for six days. And then the seventh day, you're going to go around it seven times. <laughs> now, I try to understand that. Why you have to go around seven times on the seventh day? Now, I don't know why. What I do know is that that is what God said. And we can work with the strategy that God gives us or we can come up with our own strategy. This thing does not work with think tanks or, you know, we look at the best case scenario, nothing of the sort. It is what the Lord says. And thank God that Joshua was willing to walk in obedience. So they had an exact strategy. And that is what they followed. Let me read what the Lord told them. Joshua chapter 6 verse 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So this, I believe, was very clear instruction. And Joshua followed it. So we get a scenario, seven days. The first six days, they went around Jericho once. And then on the seventh day, they went around it seven times. So in other words, they went around it 13 times in all. And at the end of going around it for the seventh time, on the seventh day, then there was going to be the blowing of the trumpet and, and the people were going to give a shout and the whole wall was going to fall down flat. I like that. Specific instructions. But you know, for that to be possible, for us to be hearing a word like that, 
somebody got to be hearing from God. This is not guesswork. God is 100% real and God speaks to his people. So, they were here, Joshua heard from God. If Joshua did not hear from God, then he would have had to come up with his own strategy. And I can tell you, when we have to depend upon our own strategy, we are never confident. God did not leave it to Joshua. What am I saying? Even as we talk about entering the kingdom of God, he will give us strategy. We do not need a think tank. We need the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord here was very, very clear, very precise. I want to look at a few things here. First, I, look at, I want to look at the children of Israel on that seventh day. They were told that they were to keep quiet. Go around one time, two times, three times. And the seventh time when, they, when the trumpet was blown, then they were supposed to give a shout. <laughs> you know what I like about that? Is that, I mean, who would have thought of such a strategy? Let's suppose we had to think of it by ourselves. Who would have thought about that? Yes. When we are depending upon God, God will move in his own way. Here, I believe that it was a miracle for the people to keep their mouths shut while they were going around. They were not supposed to talk. Do you know what it is to get people to go around seven times without talking? A lot of times we do not know how much we like to talk. But I love this. They were able to stay quiet until the right time came for them to shout. I believe that there is a time for everything. We told in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7, there is a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. There is a time for everything. And I really want to thank God that they were able to stay quiet until the right time. I know many of you will think, well, that is ordinary. That is ordinary. People like to speak, and people speak even when it is not the right time. I'll read verse 10, Joshua chapter 6. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then shall you shout. That's what I was talking about. They were to stay quiet until the right time. And I also want to look further at God's precise instruction. Verse 15. It came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. What is so special about seven? Because we are reading here a lot about seven. First, the wall was cast down or fell flat on the seventh day. They had to go around seven times. You had seven priests, each of them having a trumpet, so seven trumpets. Why seven? Why couldn't it be five? Why couldn't it be eight? Why did God choose seven? 
I believe that seven is very special to God. And Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, tells us about the Sabbath days. Verse 17 says, They were shadows, they were a shadow of things to come. What things? Well, I believe that from Adam to Christ, they were 4,000 years. And then from Christ to the year 2000, approximately 2,000 years. So from Adam to the year 2000, about 6,000 years. And after 6,000 years, then you're going into the seventh day. Why do I say that? Second Peter 3.8 says, One day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. So the 6,000 years from Adam to the year 2000, we can, call, we can call them six days. So at the year 2000, approximately, six days were completed. And we are now in the seventh day. So this is the time, this is the hour for God's people to enter the kingdom and to start to take over, to start to dispossess the enemy. <clears throat> this is a time for God's people to shout and to see the walls tumble down. Well, I'm aware that in some of our churches we are afraid to shout. It's not part of our tradition to shout. But let me say a time comes when we have to shout. And there are others who shout all the time and do not listen to hear what God has to say. So there's place for us to be quiet and there's place for us to shout. But we cannot make rules. They had to shout. That was the commandment from God. And when they shouted, the wall fell flat. Do you have a shout from your heart? Some situation you are facing, you, just, you may need to look at it and shout hallelujah, glory to God. You may need to praise God. You can praise God until the walls fall down. There are walls that need to be thrown down. We can praise God until those walls come down. Amen. Amen. We wish to remind you that the Look What God is Doing program is sponsored by the Lamaha Street Fellowship. And you may contact us by calling the telephone numbers shown on the screen. Please note that this program is aired every Saturday morning on Channel 9 at 8 o'clock. And premieres at the same time on YouTube. Of course, you may also view the YouTube program at a later time or date convenient to you. We invite you to like the video and to subscribe to the Look What God Is Doing channel when you access the program by YouTube. May God richly bless you. Amen. Yeah.